Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Scamfish presented by socialcatfish.com. On this episode, we speak to a woman named Nancy who was contacted by a man named Chris Adams on Facebook. Nancy was taking care of her boyfriend who had cancer when one day she received a Facebook message and friend request from a man named Chris Adams. The two built a bond and were in an online relationship for about five months. Nancy reached out to us after she sent countless gift cards to Chris, who was locked out of his bank account on an oil rig offshore. Let's not waste any time. Let's jump straight into it. Real quick, guys. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Your comment and like could help stop someone from being scammed. Let's get into it. Okay, my name is Nancy. Um, I live in Florida. I'm retired. Um, I used to be a waitress for about 38 mm -hmm. years. I'm reaching out to Social Catfish. Um, I was friended by a person who uh, scammed me. I met this gentleman on Facebook. He friended me there. He gave me the name of Adam Chris, and I believe he is 38 years old. That's what he told me. Actually, the reason I was online, I was basically just uh, Facebook. I was not uh, online dating, but I was going through a rough time. Uh, my partner of seven years had cancer, and I was taking care of him, and it was more or less of a diversion for me because it was very rough here. Uh, the message he sent me was he liked my profile. He liked my personality, thought I had a good sense of humor. Would I please friend him on Facebook so we could chat? It started in October. When he first started talking to me, he was very pleasant. Uh, his picture actually is what attracted me to him. And then he started, you know, talking about his life. He said he had his son. Uh, he moved uh, from uh, Kuwait City. He had custody of his son. They were on vacation. Then he just briefly kept talking to me about his life, and we chatted back and forth. Then he went and he told me he had to go back to work. He was no longer going to be on vacation and he was going to go work on an oil rig would I go on to chat so that we could talk while he was at work he was very good looking has a beard dark hair he had pictures of himself with him and his son but one thing that caught my attention is uh he dresses very well everything is designer dressing and I did make a comment about the way he dressed and he said it was nothing for him and his son to spend five hundred dollars on clothes when they shopped uh he's just very clean cut um he's Arabic just very handsome I actually was with a gentleman for 14 years who was 20 years younger but um my last partner was 20 years older but um, I discussed with this gentleman my age, and I said, he told me his age, and I told him my age. And he said, oh, that doesn't bother me at all. And so we just, it just went from there, kind of. I talked to him about my Parkinson's. He seemed like he understood it. Uh, I told him about my partner who was sick, and he gave, uh, you know, every time he talked to me, he'd ask how my partner was doing. And he was always concerned whether I was eating, I was sleeping, I was taking care of myself, and just overall, in general, interested in everything I was doing in a day. And he contacted me uh, constantly. He'd get up in the morning and... I'd wake up and there'd be a message from him saying good morning. I was the first thing on his mind. He just gave me a lot of attention at a time that uh, was rough for me. So because the attention is what I needed. My partner actually passed away in December. He was very good to me. You know, I'm sure it sounds crazy to anybody as to what I was doing, but Adam just kind of 
came into my life at the right time because I took care of my boyfriend by myself and it was it was a distraction for me. I believe it was in November he asked me for money for data. He said he forgot to buy it before he went on the oil rig and I refused to give it to him and he um, got angry, whatever. He knew how to play the game that if he didn't talk to me, it would upset me. Well, he claimed he was working on an oil rig outside of Rome. And in the day he flew there, I said, take some pictures of Rome. And he said he couldn't take any because he was on the rig. Uh, on a daily basis, he would get up, uh, go to work at 7, maybe around 9. He would claim he was on break, relaxing. Then again, about 11.30, he was on break, but he... He said he worked till like seven o'clock at night, but every time that he said he was on break, he was messaging me or talking to his son. I never really asked him in the beginning for pictures, but as time went on, I got skeptical where he was. And he sent me a picture, one picture, and then I asked him to take a picture of himself in his... Uh, room or wherever he was staying and he did take one with him laying on the bed with his head on a pillow i got even more skeptical and he took another picture supposedly on the rig but that he had to take medication for a heart problem and he said briefly that he spilled his pills and i just said okay but then weeks later, he said he was almost out of his pills and he couldn't access his money. Could I help him so he could get the, get the medication? That was one time. Then weeks later, uh, he was supposed to be coming off the rig in January and he was supposed to meet me. Some equipment broke down. And he had to have, uh, before he could get off the rig, he had to have money for the equipment. Then he needed money for some medical insurance for him and his crew that they weren't going to let him get off. It was American Express gift cards. <clears throat> and, uh, of course, you can't. They don't allow you buy them in a big lump sum. So I would literally go from store to store. Uh, buying $500 gift cards to get the money together. Then when I got the gift cards, I would have to take pictures for him of the gift cards. I was smart enough, I paid cash for them because I figured if anything was going on and he's got any kind of information, uh, like the end of my account number, my address where I was buying these gift cards. I made sure none of that was on because he wanted to see pictures of the receipts also. Conversations with him now are very brief. Uh, he has not asked me for anything since the last time and I refused. Uh, he would at any point in time when he was asking for the money and I refused would put the uh, emojis that he was crying or emojis he was angry that I didn't care about him. He never threatened me at all. He would always say that I didn't care about him. I didn't care about his son. Uh, right now, again, he'll send me a good morning, beautiful, or I will always love you. Um, you know, that that's kind of what's going on. Sometimes I answer, sometimes I ignore him. If I ignore him, hours later, he'll crop up. The reason I don't want to tell my family is they can be very judgmental. Um, they, they would not be there to uh, support me and help me get through it. It would be more of, a, oh, Nancy made a mistake again. And, uh, that kind of thing, because I've kind of been 
uh, the uh, black sheep of the family all my life. So it was just one more notch in my belt, so to speak. I'm reaching out to social catfish because um, I was being scammed and um, I want closure on all this. And I want to make sure other people out there do not fall into the same um, situation I did. Uh, there's a lot of scammers out there. So hopefully this social catfish and myself will be able to get that out there to other people. Nancy was just a great person who was willing to send money to help her friend out. Unfortunately, we knew this was a scam just based off the photos that Nancy sent to us. We would like to ask anybody that is watching this video to please leave a positive comment below to help lift her spirits. After doing some digging, Nancy and our team were able to locate an Instagram profile that had all the photos that were sent to her by the man who claimed his name was Adam Chris. We decided to sit down with Nancy for the first time and try to provide some closure for her. If you're looking to find the identity of your online lover, you can start with the tools on our site, socialcatfish.com. You can click this YouTube card or click the link in our bio. Just hitting like, comment, and subscribe helps us build more tools out for you to use in the future. Let's get into this. I know that you've come to us for some answers and in looking into your relationship with Adam. So I wanted to start out by saying, you know, last time that we had spoken, I sensed some hesitancy as far as you talking to your family, letting them know about your relationship with Adam and sending money. I know that there was an option for you to talk to your sister about it. I know that you guys did talk about it and I wanted to know how that went. That actually went better than I thought it would. Uh, she said basically she kind of understood the romance part of it, but um, she didn't quite get the money part, you know, why someone would send money to somebody like that. I didn't discuss the amount because I knew that wouldn't probably be good, but um it went good. She she supported me. Let's just say that. Well, that's great news. That's, yeah. that's awesome. So we wanted to get into some of the images that we were looking at to kind of give you an idea of how we came to the conclusion that Adam isn't who he says he is. Right off the bat, we see this image all the time. It's all over the internet, all over romance scams. It's a guy leaning up against a guardrail on an oil rig, holding up a paper, and Scammers Photoshop the face, they Photoshop what's on the paper, they, they take this image and they just run wild with it. So we see this all the time, and whenever we see this picture in a case, it's a high likelihood that it's a, it's a scam, uh, unfortunately. So Nancy, I also wanted to go over the Amex gift cards that were used for the form of payment to Adam. With Amex gift cards, they're untraceable because there's no information, no personal information attached to these types of cards. So once you send them and they're used, there's no way to retrieve that information and there's no way to reverse those charges. So although we weren't able to track the method of payment, we were able to send a tracker to the scammer so we can find out where in the world this person is located. So we got a couple of hits and at first it was kind of all over the place because scammers use something called a VPN which masks your actual location based on your IP address. So once he clicked it on the mobile device, we were able to pin down the actual location. And unfortunately, he was located in Lagos, Nigeria, which is another major red flag for whether or not it's a scam. So it, it looks like uh, that was the result of the tracker as well. So what we were also able to confirm when searching Adam, we did find a real profile with his images and the name that he goes by is Zane. Which is something that you were able to verify as well, correct, Nancy? Yes. Uh-huh. And one thing that we always like to point out is the person in these photos is just as much of a victim as anybody in this situation because they're just unknowingly posting their photos on social media like anybody else and scammers come, come along and take these images and use them to steal money from other people. So unfortunately, that's the case here as well. 
Uh, he has nothing to do with the scam, and this is just an unfortunate situation, and he's been taken advantage of. I actually, at one point, I tried to inbox him. To be honest, as much as we see this guy's photos, I wouldn't be surprised if he has hundreds of messages in his inbox. Unfortunately, again, very unfortunate situation, but these a lot of people get flooded with with people saying like, hey, I've been in a two year relationship with you. I've been dating you for three years. Like, and it's just, he's just, you know, it's a difficult yeah. situation for him as well. What we found out looking through Zane's accounts is that he has thousands of photos. So it makes him an easy target because he has so much, so much information, so many photos and, and they're publicly available. And one of the things we always tell people is if you're talking to someone online, tell them to hold up a piece of paper with something written on it, tell them to put two fingers up. So if you, if someone has that posted on their profile, it's nothing for a scammer to take it, Photoshop the image and use it as proof to say that they're the real person. So the next thing, Nancy, is I wanted to talk a little bit about your relationship with Adam currently. Are you guys still talking? Where are you guys at? <laughs> yeah, he's, uh, I've tried to stop talking to him, but he's still messaging and wants money. And um, I try not to talk to him too much because I, I know he's a fraud. Um, so it's, it's a slow process. It's an addiction. Let's just put it that way to keep the conversation going. But I know the end result is to just stop talking and block them. Yeah, Nancy, actually, we highly encourage that you, you block him. Okay. We do, only because the reason why he's still lingering and continuing to connect with you is because you had already given him money. He's trying to maintain that relationship with you so that he could possibly get some money in the future. One thing to note is that now that you understand that Chris Adams is a scammer, it's important to understand that these scammers have tactics and they have a system for getting money out of people. He knows what buttons to press to get you into the emotional state where you'd be willing to send more. So as long as you have that line of communication with him, he's going to make your life, he's going to torment you because he's, what they do is they collect, they collect your pain points so they know what to talk about to get you to do what they want. So unfortunately, if you do prolong the conversation with him, he's going to keep you on an emotional roller coaster for as long as you talk to him. How are you feeling right now? Now that you know that he's not who he says he is, now that you know that it's best for you to walk away, would you be willing to block him and wipe your hands with the whole situation and walk away right now? Um, yes, definitely. And I think what I need to do is uh, get off Instagram because I constantly go to that Zane's pictures and comment on his pictures. And that's become a habit every day. So I've got to get off Instagram also. When do you think that you would get to that decision of getting off of Instagram? Probably today. <laughs> So since you're, since you're making changes today, would you be willing to block Adam Chris right now on this call? Would you be willing to do that? Lead me through it. When we hang up, I promise you I will block him. It sounds like you're moving on with your life and putting this in the past. So now our question to you is, how do you feel about online dating as a whole and talking to people online? What are you going to do going forward and what does... Nancy's love life look like going forward from this? Um, going forward is going to be kind of quiet. <laughs> uh, online dating, uh, I'm not happy with it at all. I've been on a couple sites and had, uh, you know, not good responses. So, no, there won't be any. I'm actually Facebook. I used to be on it a lot, but I'm not on Facebook much anymore either. So uh, social media is just, it's crazy out there right now. I'm happy for you, Nancy. 
Well, I appreciate all you guys have done. Um, you know, like I said, I, in the process of the whole thing, kind of sensed it, but I needed a confirmation, and you folks have definitely helped me with that, so that's awesome. You seem to be in good spirits, Nancy, and I'm very, we're very glad that you got the closure that you needed, and you feel like you have the strength to walk away from the situation. Yes, I do, definitely, definitely. I just want to say that we think it's great that, you know, you researched a lot of this information on your own and you were able to come to terms with the reality of your relationship. Thank you. Thank you. Your support has helped me too. So <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. We wish you well, Nancy. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for watching another episode of Scamfish presented by socialcatfish.com. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. See you next time. Scams come in so many different forms. If you have been a victim of any of the scams below, please email us at sharemystory@socialcatfish.com. We'll get to the bottom of it with help from our Social Catfish team. By sharing your story with our YouTube audience, we can educate, spread awareness, and maybe someday we can put an end to these scams.